two households, both alike in dignity in fair Verona, where we lay our scene. From ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. From forth the fatal loins of these two foes, a pair of star-crossed lovers take their life, whose misadventured piteous overthrows do with their death bury their parents' strife. The fearful passage of their death mark love and the continuance of their parents' rage, which but their children's end naught could remove, is now the two hours' traffic of our stage. The which, if you with patient ears attend, what here shall miss, our toil shall strive to mend. Gregory, oh my word, we will not carry coals. No, for then we should be colliers. I mean, and we being collar will draw. Aye, while you live, throw your neck out of collar. I strike quickly. But thou art not quickly moved to strike. The dog of the house of Montague moves me. To move is to stir, and to be valiant is to stand. Therefore, if thou art moved, thou runst away. The dog of that house shall move me to stand. I will take the wall of any man or maid of Montagues. That shows thee a weak slave, for the weakest goes to the wall. True, and therefore women, being the weaker vessels, are ever thrust to the wall. Therefore, I will push Montague's men from the wall, and thrust his women to the wall. The quarrel is between our masters and us, their men. Tis all one! I will show myself a tyrant when I fought with the men. I will be cruel with the maids and cut off their heads. The heads of the maids? Aye, the heads of the maids. Or their maiden heads. Take it in what sense thou wilt. They take it in sense that feel it. <laughs> Me they shall feel I am able to stand, and tis known I am a pretty piece of flesh. Tis well thou art not fish, for if thou hadst, thou hadst been poor, John. Draw thy tool. Here comes two of the house of Montagues. My naked weapon is out. Quarrel, I will back thee. How? Turn thy back and run. <laughs> Hear me not. No, Mary, I fear thee. Now let us take the law of our sides. Let them begin. I will frown as I pass by and let them take it as they list. Nay, as they dare. I will bite my thumb at them, which is a disgrace to them if they bear it. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? I do bite my thumb at you, sir. Do you bite your thumb at us, sir? Is the law on our side if I say I? No. No, sir, I do not bite my thumb at you, sir, but I do bite my thumb, sir. Do you quarrel, sir? Quarrel, sir? No, sir. If you do, sir, I am for you. I serve as good a man as you. No better. Well, sir. Say better. Here comes one of my master's kinsmen. Yes, better. You lie. Drive you be men. Part fools. Put up your swords. You know not what you do. Drawn amongst these heartless hinds. Turn thee, Benvolio, look upon my death. I do but keep the peace. Put up thy sword, or manage to part these men with me. What? Drawn and talk of peace? I hate the word, as I hate hell, all Montagues, and thee. Have at thee, cowards. Bring down with the Montagues! Bring down with the Give me my long sword, ho! Crutch, or crutch, I call you for a sword! My sword, I say! Old Montagues come and flourishes his blade in spite of me. Hold me, not let me go. Thou shalt go first to seek a bow. Thank subjects. Enemies to peace, profaners of this neighbour stained steel. Will they not hear? What ho, you men! You beasts that quench the fire of your pernicious rage with purple fountains issuing from your veins. On pain of torture from these bloody hands, throw your mistempered weapons to the ground and hear the sentence of your moved prince. Three civil brawls bred of an airy word by thee, old Capulet and Montague, have thrice disturbed the quiet of our streets and made Verona's ancient citizens cast by their grave beseeming ornaments to wield old partisans in hands as old, cankled with peace to part your cankered hate. If ever you disturb these streets again, your life shall pay the forfeit of the peace. But this time all the rest depart away. You, Capulet, shall go along with me, and Montague, come you this afternoon, to know our further pleasure in this case, to old Freetown, our common judgment place. Once more, on pain of death, all men depart. Who set this ancient quarrel you reproach? Speak, nephew, were you by when it began? Here were the servants of your adversary, close fighting here did I approach. I drew to part them, in the instant came the fiery Tibber with his sword prepared, which, as he breathed defiance to my ears, he swung about his head and cut the winds, who, nothing hurt him withal, hissed him in scorn. While we, e we interchanging thrusts and blows, fought more and more and fought on part and part, until the prince came and part of you depart. Oh, where is Romeo? You saw him today? Right glad I am he was not at this fray. Madame, an hour before the worship sun, peered forth the golden window of the east. A troubled mind drove me to walk abroad, where, underneath the grove of sycamore that, westward rooted from the city side, so early walking did I see your son. Towards my maid, but he was wary of me and stole into the covert of the wood. 
I, measuring my affections by my own, the most busy when they're most alone, pursued my humour, not pursuing his gladly shunned and gladly fled from me. Many a morning hath he been seen there, his tears augmenting the fresh morning dew, adding to clouds more clouds with his deep sighs, but also soon the cheering sun, that in the far east we begin to draw the shady curse of Aurora's bed. Away from the light steals home my heavy sun, and private in his chamber pens himself, unless good counsel may the cause remove. My noble uncle, do you know the cause? I neither know nor can learn of him. Have you importuned him by any means? both by myself and with many other friends, but he, his own affection's counsellor, is to himself, I will not say how true, but so far from sounding and discovery that ere bid the bud of the envious worm. Ere he can spread his sweet leaves to the air or dedicate his beauty to the sun, could we but learn from where his sorrows grow, we would as willingly give cures no. See, where he comes, so please he step aside, I'll know his grievance will be much denied. Oh, I would so work though happy by thy stay, but in true shift. Come, madame, let's away. Good morrow, cousin. Is the day so young? Though you struck nine. I me. Sad hours seem long. Is that my father that went hence so fast? It was. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love? Out. Of love? Out of her favour where I'm in love. Alas, that love so gentle in his view should be so tyrannous and rough in proof. Oh, me. What? Frey was here. Tell me not, for I've heard it all. It is much to do with hate, but more with love. Why then? Oh, brawling love, loving hate, anything of nothing first create. Heavy likeness, serious vanity, misshapen chaos of well seeming forms. This love feel I that feel no love in this. Dost thou not laugh? No, cuz I'd rather weep. Good heart at what? At thy good heart's oppression. Why such is love's transgression? Griefs of mine own lie heavy in my breast, which thou wilt propagate to have it pressed. With more of thine, this love that thou hast shown doth add more grief to too much of mine own. Farewell, my cuz. Soft, I will go along, and if you leave me so, you do me wrong. Tut, I have lost myself. I am not here. This is not Romeo, he's some other where. Tell me in sadness, who is it that you love? In sadness, cousin, I do love a woman. I aim so near when I supposed you love. A right good mark, man. And she's fair, I love. A right fair mark, fair cuz, is soon as hit. Well, in that hit you miss, shall not be hit with Cupid's arrow. Then she has sworn she still lived chaste. She hath, and that sparing makes huge waste. For beauty starved with her severity cuts beauty off from all posterity. She is too fair, too wise, wisely too fair, to merit bliss in making me despair. She hath forsworn to love, but in that vow do I live dead that live to tell it now. Be ruled by me, forget to think of her. Teach me how I should forget to think. By giving liberty unto thine eyes, examine other beauties. Show me a mistress that is passing fair. What doth her beauty serve as a note where I may read who passed that passing fair? Farewell, thou canst not teach me to forget. I'll pay that doctrine or I'll die in debt. But Montague is bound as well as I in penalty alike, and tis not hard, I think, for men as old as we to keep the peace. Honourable reckoning are you both, and pity tis that you lived at odds so long, but now, my lord, what say you to my suit? But saying, oh, what I have said before, my child is but strange in the world. She hath not seen the change of fourteen years. Let two more summers with her in their pride, ere we may think her ripe to be a bride. Younger than she, a happy mother's maid. And too soon marred, although so early made. The earth has swallowed all my hopes, but she, she is the hopeful lady of my earth. But woo her, gentle Paris, get her heart. My will to her consent is but a part, and if she agree, within her scope of choice lies my consent and fair recording voice. Tonight I hold an old accustomed feast, where to I have invited many a guest, such as I love. With you among the store, one more most welcome makes my number more. At my poor house, which I hold this night, earth treading stars that make dark heaven light. Such comfort as do lusty young men feel when well apparelled April on the heel of the ring to tread. Even such delight among fresh human buds may you this night inherit at my house. Hear all, all see. And like her most, whose merit most shall be, which on more view of many mine being one, may stand in number, though in reckoning none. Come, go with me. Go, sirrah, trudge about through fair Verona, find these persons out whose names are written here, and to them say, my house and welcome on their pleasure stay. Find them out whose names are written here. 
it is written that the shoemaker should meddle with his yard, the tailor with his last, the fisher with his pencil, and the painter with his nets. But I am sent to find those persons whose names are written here. But never can I find what persons the, the writing person hath here writ. I must have learned in good time. Man, one pain is lessened by another anguish. One desperate grief cures another languish. Turn giddy and be halt by back returning. One desperate grief cures another languish. Take thou some new infections thy eye, and rank poison of the old will die. The plantain leaf is excellent for that. What, I pray thee. I pray, sir, can you read? Aye, mine own fortune in my misery. Perhaps you have learnt it without book, but I pray, can you read anything you see? Aye, if I know the letters and the language. Will you say honestly, rest your mind? Stay, fellow, I can read. <coughs> Signor Martino and his wife and daughters, County Anselm and his beauteous sisters, the lady widow of Vitravio, Signor Placentio and his lovely nieces, Mercutio and his brother Valentine, my uncle Capulet, his wife and daughters, my fair niece Rosaline, Livia, Signor Valentino, and his cousin Tybalt, Lucio, and the lively Helena. A fair assembly, whither should they come? Up. Whither? To supper to our house. Whose house? My master's. Indeed, I should have asked you that before. Now I'll tell you without asking. My master is the great rich Capulet, and I pray if you not be one of the house of Montagues, come and crush a cup of wine. Rest you merry. At the same ancient feast of Capulet, such a fair Rosaline that thou so lovest with all the admired beauties of Rona. Go thither, and with unattained eye, compare her face with some that I shall show, and I will make thee think thy swan a crow. One fairer than my love, the all-seeing sun, who ne'er saw her match since first the world begun. I'll go along no such sight to be shown, but to rejoice in splendour of mine own. Nurse, where's my daughter? Call her forth to me. Now by my maidenhead, at twelve-year-old I bade her come. What lamb? What ladybird? God forbid, where's this girl? What? Juliet! How now? Who calls? Your mother. Madame, I'm here. What is your will? This is the matter. Nurse, give leave a while. We must talk in secret. Oh, nurse, come back again. I've remembered me. Thou hearest our counsel. Thou knowest my daughter's of a of a pretty age. Faith, I can tell her age unto an hour. Oh, she's not fourteen. I'll lay fourteen of my teeth, and yet to my teeth be it spoken I have but four. She's not fourteen. How long is it now till lamb is tied? Oh, fortnight, an odd day. Even or odd, of all days in the year, come lamb is eve at night, shall she be fourteen. On lamb is eve at night, shall she be fourteen, that shall she marry. I remember it well. Enough of this, I pray thee, hold thy peace. Yes, my lord. Oh, do I pray thee, nurse, say I. Peace, I have done. I was the prettiest babe. I might live to see thee married once. I have my wish. Marry, this marry is the very theme I came to talk of. Tell me, daughter Juliet, how stands your disposition to be married? This is an honour I dream not of. An honour? When not I thine only nurse, I would say thou had sucked wisdom from thy teeth. Well, think of marriage now. Younger than you, here in Verona, ladies of esteem are made already mothers. By my count, I was your mother much upon these years, that you are now a maid. Thus, then, in brief, the valiant Paris seeks you for his love. A man, young lady, lady, such a man is all the world, why, right? he's a man of wax. Verona Summer hath not such a flower. No, he's a flower, and faith a very flower. What say you? Can you love the gentleman? Tonight you shall behold him at our feast. Read o'er the volume of young Paris's face, and find delight wit there in beauty's pen. So shall you share all that he doth possess, and by having him making yourself no less. No less. No bigger. Women grow by men. Speak briefly. Can you like a Paris' love? Look to like if looking like you move. But no more deep will I indart mine eye than your strength with strength to make it fly. Madame, the guests are come. Supper served up. You called. My young lady asked for. I beseech you. Follow straight. We follow thee. Go, girl. Seek happy nights to happy days. Give me a torch, I am not for this ambling. Being but heavy, I will bear the light. Nay, gentle Romeo, we must have you dance. Not I, believe me, you have dancing shoes with nimble soles. I have a soul of lead, so stakes me to the ground, I cannot move. You are a lover, borrow Cupid's wings and soar with them above a common bound. I am too sore and pierced with his shaft to soar with light feathers, and so bound I cannot bound a pitch above dull woe. 
and the love's heavy burden do I sink. And to sink in it should you burden love. Too great oppression for a tender thing. Is love a tender thing? Is it too rough, too rude, too boisterous? It pricks like thorn. If love be rough with you, be rough with love. Prick love for pricking and you beat love down. I dreamed a dream tonight. So did I. Well, what was yours? That dreamers often lie. In bed asleep while they do dream things true. Then I see Queen Mab hath been with you. She is the fairy's midwife, and comes in shape no bigger than an agate stone on the forefinger of an alderman, drawn with a team of little atomies of thought men's noses as they lie asleep. And in this state she gallops night by night through lovers' brains, and then they dream of love. O oh, courtier's knees that dream on curtsy straight, O oh, lawyer's fingers that straight dream on feet. O'er oh, a lady's lips that straight on kisses dream. Sometimes she driveth o'er a soldier's neck, and then dreams he of cutting foreign throats, of breaches, ambuscados, of Spanish blades, of healths five fathoms deep, and then anon drums in his ear, at which he starts and wakes, and being frightened, swears a prayer or two and sleeps again. This is that very nab that plats the manes of horses in the night, and bakes the elf locks in foul, sluttish hairs, which, once untangled, must mitch fortune bows. This is that hag that, when maids lie on their backs, presses them and learns them first to bear, making them women of good carriage. This is she. Peace. Peace, Mercutio. Peace. Thou talkst of nothing. True. I talk of dreams, which are the children of an idle brain, begot of nothing but vain fantasy, which is as thin a substance as the air, and even more inconstant than the wind which woos even now the frozen bosom of the north. And being angered, puffs away from thence and turns to face the dew-dropping cell. This wind you talk of blows us from ourselves. Supper is done, and we shall come too late. I fear too early. For my mind misgives some consequence, yet hanging in the stars shall bitterly begin his fearful date with this night's revels and expire the term of a despised life enclosed in my breast by some vile forfeit of untimely death. But he who hath the steerage of my course direct my sail on, lusty gentlemen. Strike drum! Welcome, gentle people. Those that have their toes on plagued with corns will have a bout with you. Aha, my family, which of you will now deny to dance? They that make dainty, they all swear hath corns. Am I come near ye now? Welcome, gentle people. I have seen a day that I have worn a visor and could tell a whispering tale in the fair person's ear. Tis gone, tis gone, tis gone. You are welcome, gentle people. Come, musicians, play. A hall, a hall, give room, and fit it, folks. More light, you knaves, and quench the fire, the room is grown too hot. Ah, Sarah, the sun looks for sport, comes well. Nay, sit, nay, sit, good cousin Capulet. For you and I are past thy dancing days. What lady is that which doth enrich the hand of John Knight? She doth teach the torches to burn bright. It seems she hangs upon the cheek of night. Did my heart love till now? For swear it's sight, for I ne'er saw true beauty till this night. This by his voice should be a Montague. Fetch me my knife, boy. What dares the slave come hither, covered with an antic face, to fleer and scorn at our solemnity? Now by the stock and honour of my kin, to strike him dead, I hold it not a sin. Why, how now, kinsman? Why forestorm you so? Uncle, this is a Montague, our foe, a villain that's hither come in spite to scorn at our solemnity this night. Young Romeo, is it? Tis that villain, Romeo. Content thee, gentle cuz, let him alone. He bears him like a portly gentleman, and to say truth, Verona brags him to be a virtuous and well-governed youth. I would not, for the wealth of all the town here, in my house, do him a disparagement. Therefore, be patient, take no note of him. It is my will, the which, if thou respect, put off these frowns and ill-beseeming semblance for a feast. But it fits when such a villain is a guest, I'll not endure it. He shall be endured. My uncle, tis a shame. Go to, go to, be quiet, or more light, more light, for shame, I'll make you quiet. What cheerly my heart? I will withdraw, but this intrusion now seemingly sweet turned a bitter gall. If I profane with my unworthiest hand, this holy shrine, the gentle fine is this. My lips, two blushing pilgrims, ready stands to smooth that rough touch with a tender kiss. Pilgrim, you do wrong your hand too much, which manly devotion shows in this. For saints have hands that pilgrims' hands do touch, from palm to palm as holy palmers kiss. Have saints not lips and holy palmers too? My pilgrim lips that they must use in prayer. 
Dear saint that lips do what hands do, they pray. Grant thou less faith turn to despair. <laughs> Saints do not move the ground for prayer's sake. And move not while my prayer's effect I take thus from my lips by yours. My sin is purged. Have my lips the sin that they have took. <laughs> Kissed by the book. Madam, your mother craves a word with you. What is her mother? Mary Bachelor, her mother's the lady of the house. And I tell you, he that can lay hold of her shall have the cheeks. She had kept it. Okay, well, away be gone. This is the best. So I fear the more is my unrest. Nay, gentlemen, prepare not to be gone. We have a trifling, foolish banquet towards. Oh, is it e'en so? Well, then I thank you all. I thank you, honest gentlemen. Good night. Come hither, nurse. What is your gentleman? The son and heir of old Tiberio. What's he that's now going out of door? Married that, I think, be young Petruccio. What's he that follows there, that would not dance? I know not. Go oh, ask his name, we be married. My grave is like to be my wedding bed. His name is Romeo, and a Montague, the only son of your greatest enemy. My only love sprung from my only hate, too early seen unknown and known too late. Prodigious birth of love it is to me. That I must love a loved enemy. Now old desire doth in his deathbed lie, and young affection gapes to be his heir, that fair for which love groaned for and would die. With tender Juliet matched is now not fair, now Romeo is beloved and loves again alike bewitched by the charm of looks, but to his foe supposed he must complain, and she steal love's sweet bait from fearful hooks. Being held a foe, he may not have access to breed such vows as lovers use to swear, and she as much in love, her means much less, to meet her new beloved anywhere. But passion lends them power, time means to meet, Tempering extremities with extreme sweet. Can I go forward when my heart is here? Turn back, dull earth, find thy center out. Romeo! My cousin Romeo! He is wise, and on my life hath stolen him home to bed. Come, you ran this way, let the orchard wall call, good Bacuccio. Nay, I'll conjure too. Romeo! Humours, madman, passion, lover! Appear thou on the likeness of a sigh, speak but one rhyme, and I am satisfied. Come, he is himself among these trees to be consorted with the humorous night. Blind is his love, and best befits the dark. If love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. Romeo, good night. Come, shall we go? Go then, for tis in vain. To seek him here, that means not to be found. Jests and scars that never felt a wound. But soft. Like the yonder window breaks. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is sick and green, and none but fools do wear it. Cast it off. It is my lady, or it is my love. But she knew she well. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses, I will answer it. I am too bold, it is not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven do, having some business, entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were there, they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven would, through the airy region, stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand, if there were a glove on that hand. 
that I might touch that cheek. I mean... She speaks. Speak again, bright angel. Oh, Romeo. Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not, be but sworn, my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? It is but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, no, not a Montague. What's Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name, that which we would call a rose by any other name, would smell a sweet? So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection without that title which he owes. Romeo doth thy name, and for that name that is no part of thee, take all myself. I take thee at thy word. Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth I never will be Romeo. Man, art thou that thus bescreened at night, who stumbles to my counsel? By a name I know not how to tell thee who I am, for my name, dear saint, is hateful to myself because it is an enemy to thee. Had I it written, I would tear the word. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of that tongue's utterance, yet I know that sound. Art thou not Romeo in a Montague? Neither, fair saint, if either thee dislike. How camest thou hither? Tell me and wherefore. The orchard walls are high and hard to climb, the place hath considering who thou art if any of my kinsmen find thee. With love's light wings did I o'er perch the walls, for stony limits cannot hold love out. And what love can do that dares love attempt, therefore thy kinsmen are no let to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack, there lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet, and I am proof against their enmity. Look at the world they saw thee in. Oh, gentle Romans, how does love pronounce it faithfully? Lady, by yonder blessed moon, I swear, the tips with silver or the fruit tree top. Oh, do you not swear by the moon, the constant moon that monthly changes in her circle orb, lest that thy love prove likewise variable? What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all. If thou wilt swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. Good night. Good night. Wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have tonight? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for me. Who gave thee mine before I have just request it, and yet I would it were to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it? For what purpose? I hear some noise within. Dear love, adieu. Anon, good nurse. Sweet one to keep me true, stay this little while. Come again. Blessed, blessed night. I'm afeard being a knight, all this is but a dream, too flattering, sweet to be substantial. Three words, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. That thy bent of love be honourable, thy purpose marriage send me where tomorrow. In all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Juliet! By and by I come to cease thy suit and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. To thrive my soul. A thousand times good night. Romeo, at what o'clock tomorrow shall I send to thee? At the hour of nine. I will not fail. It is twenty years till then. Good night. Good night, parting in such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Sleep, dwell upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. Would I were sleep and peace so sweet to rest? So hence will I to my ghostly father's cell, his help to crave, and my dear hap to tell. Within the infant rind of this sweet flower, poison hath residence and medicine power. For this being smelt and with part cheers each part, being tasted slays all senses with the heart. Two such opposed kings encamp them still, in man as well as herbs, grace, and rude will. And where the water is predominant, full soon the canker death eats up that plant. Good morrow, father. Benedicte, what early tongue so sweet salute me? Well, here I hit it right. Our Romeo hath not been in bed tonight. Tis true, the sweeter rest was mine. God pardon sin, wast thou with Rosaline? With Rosaline? My ghostly father, no. I have forgot that name and that name's word. That's my good son. But where hast thou been then? I'll tell thee, thou ask it me again. I have been feasting with mine enemy, where on a sudden one hath wounded me. That's by me wounded both our remedies. Within thy help and holy physic lies, I bear no hatred, blessed man, for lo, my intercession likewise steads my foe. 
be plain, good son, and homely in thy drift. Redling confession finds but redling shrift. Then plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on her, so hers is set on mine, and all combine, save what thou must combine. By a holy marriage, when and where and how, we wet, we wooed, and we made exchange of vow. I'll tell thee as we pass, but this I pray that thou consent to marry us today. Holy St. Francis, what a change is here! Is Rosalind whom he did love so dear so soon forsaken? Young men's love then lies, not truly in their heart, but in their eyes. Pray thee, chide not, she whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love allow. But come, young waverer, come go with me, in one respect I'll thy assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove to turn your household's rancour into true love. Then let us hence I stand on sudden haste. Wisely and slow, they stumble that run fast. Where the devil should this Romeo be? Come he not home tonight? Not to his father's, I spoke with his man. Ah, that same pale, hard-hearted wench that Rosaline torments him so that he will sure run mad. Tybalt, the kinsman of old Capulet, sent a letter to his father's house. Challenge on my life, Romeo will answer it. Any man that can write to me answer a letter. Nay, he will answer letters, master, how he dares being dead. Alas, poor Romeo, he's already dead. Stabbed with a white wench's black eye, shot through the ear with a love song, the very pin of his heart cleft with a blind bow boy's butt shaft. And is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why? What is Tybalt? More than a prince of cats, I may tell you. Oh, he is the courageous captain of compliments. A very good blade, a very tall man, a very good whore. Why, is this not a lamentable thing, grandsire, that we should be thus afflicted with these strange flies, these fashion mongers, these bertonamis? Here comes Romeo, here comes Romeo. Without his roe, like a dried herring, flesh, flesh, how art thou fishified? <gasps> Signor Romeo, bonjour. Here's a French salutation for your French slop. Gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Good morrow to you both. What counterfeit did I give you? The ship, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? Pardon, good Mercutio, but my business is great, and in times such as these, a man may strain courtesy. That's as much to say such a case as yours constrains a man to bow on the hands. Meaning to curtsy. <laughs> Thou hast most kindly hit it. Most courteous exposition. Nay, I am the very pink of courtesy. Pink for flower? Right. Why then is my pump well flowered? <laughs> well said. Follow me now, this jester, thou hast worn out thy pump, and when the very soul of it is worn, the jest may remain after the wearing soul singular. Oh, single soul jest solely singular for the singleness. Come between us, good Benvolio, my wits faint. Switch and spurs, switch and spurs, or I'll cry a match. <sighs> nay, nay, if thy wits run the wild goose chase, I am done, for thou hast more of the wild goose in one of thy wits than I'm sure I have in my whole five. Was I with you there for the goose? Thou wast not there for anything if thou wast not there for the goose. I shall bite thee by thy ear for that jest. Good goose, bite not. <laughs> Why is this not better now than groaning for love? Now art thou Romeo. Now art thou what thou art, by art as well as by nature. For this driveling love is like a great natural that runs rolling up and down behind his bauble in a hole. Stop there, stop there. Thou desirest me to stop in my tail against the hair? Good you, good morrow, gentlemen. Good you, good den, fair gentlewoman. Can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? I can tell you, but young Romeo will be older when you find him than he was when you sought him. I am the youngest of that name, for fault of a worse. You say well. Nay, is the worst well? Very well, wisely. If you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. She will indict him to some supper. <laughs> aboard, <coughs> aboard, so ho. I will follow you. Farewell, ancient lady. Farewell. No, farewell. Pray you, sir, what saucy merchant was this that was so full of his ropery? A gentleman, nurse, that loves to hear himself talk and will speak more in a minute than he will stand to in a month. Pray you, sir, as I told you, my young lady bade me inquire you well, and what she bade me say I must keep to myself. But firstly, let me tell you, if ye should lead her into a fool's paradise, surely it were a very gross kind of behaviour. For the gentlewoman is young, and therefore if thou should deal double with her, sir, truly it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman, and very weak dealing. Nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress, I protest unto thee. Good heart. And in faith I will tell her as much. Lord, she will be a joyful woman. Yes, what wilt thou tell her? I will, not mark me. I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentleman-like offer. Bid her devise some means to come to shrift this afternoon, and there she shall at Vile or itself be shrived and married. This afternoon, sir? Well, she shall be there. And stay, good nurse, but a little bit behind the abbey wall. Within the hour, my man will be with thee and bring thee cords made like a tackled stair, which to the high-top gallant of my joy, I must use in the secret night. Commend me to thy lady. Aye, a thousand times. Oh, 
clock struck nine when I did send the nurse, and in half an hour she promised to return. Pretend she could not meet with him. That's not so. Oh, she is lame. Had she affections of warm and youthful blood, she'd be as swift as a ball in motion. My words would bandy her to my sweet love and hiss to me. For old folks, many fain as they were dead, and weedly, heavy, slow, and as pale as lead. Oh, God, she comes. Oh, honey, nurse, what news? Has thou met with him? Now, good nurse. Oh, why look so sad? Do news be sad yet tell them merrily? If good, thou shameless is sweet and use music. I'm a weary. Give me leave a while. Nay, come, I pray thee, speak, speak, good now speak. Can you not stay a while? If I news good or bad, answer to that. Let me be satisfied. Is it good or bad? Well, you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man. What says he of our marriage? What of that? Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me what says my love. Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous, and a kind, and I want a handsome and virtuous. Where's your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she is within, where should she be? How oddly thou repliest. Your love says, like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? God's lady dear, are you so hot? Henceforward, do you mistress yourself? Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to shift today? I have. Then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. <laughs> so smile the heavens upon this holy act that our trials of sorrow chide us not. Amen. Amen. These violent delights have violent ends. Therefore love moderately. Long love doth so too quickly arise as tardy is too slow.
I pray thee, good Mercutio, let's retire. The day is hot, the Capulet's broad, and if we meet, we shall not escape a brawl. For now these hot days is in my blood stirring. Thou art like one of those fellows that when he enters the confines of a tavern, claps me a sword upon the table and says, God, send me no need of thee. And upon the operation of the second cup, draws it on the draw, and indeed, there is no need. Am I like such a fellow? Come, come, thou art as hot as a jack in thy mood as any in Italy. And as soon moved to be moody, and as soon moody to be moved. And what too? Nay, there were two such. We should have none shortly, for one would kill the other. Thou, like thou wilt quarrel with a man who hath a hair more or a hair less in his beard than thou hast. Thou wilt quarrel with a man for cracking nuts, having no reason other than because thou hast hazel eyes. Would I but such an eye would spy out such a quarrel? Thy head is full of quarrels, and yet thou wilt tutor me from quarrelling. And I was so apt to quarrel as thou art. Any man should buy the fee simple of my life for an hour and a quarter. The fee simple? Oh, simple. By my head, here come the Capulets. By my heel, I care not. Follow me close, for I will speak with them. Gentlemen, good den. A word with one of you. And but one word with one of us? Couple it with something. Make it a word and a blow. You'll find me apt enough to that, sir, and you'll give me occasion. Can you not take some occasion without giving? Mercutio, thou consort with Romeo. Consort? What, dost thou make us minstrels? And now makes minstrels of us, looks to hear nothing but discords. Here's my fiddlestick. Here's that you might you dance, sounds, consort. We talk here in the public haunt of men. Either we're drawn to some private place and reason coldly of your grievances or else depart. Who will eyes gaze on us? Men's eyes were made to look, and let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure, I. Well, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. But I'll be hanged, sir, if he wear your livery. Marry, go before the field. He'll be your follower. Your worship in that sense may call him man. Romeo. The hate I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt, the love I have for thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain I am none, therefore be gone. I see thou knowest me not. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me, therefore turn and draw. I do protest I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise. Until thou shalt know the reason of my love, dear Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as my own. Be satisfied. Oh, calm, dishonourable, vile submission. As the staccato carries it away. Tybalt, you rat catcher, do you walk? What dost thou have with me? Oh, great king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives that I mean to make bold with all. And as you shall use me hereafter, try beat the rest of the eight. Do you take your sword out of this pitcher by the ears? Make haste, lest mine be about your ears, ere it be out. I am for you. Gentle Mercutio. <laughs> Take up both your houses! Is he gone and hath nothing? Oh, God, so hurt! Aye, aye, a scratch! A scratch, Mary! Tis enough. It will serve. <laughs> Ask me tomorrow, you shall find me a grave man! Why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm! I thought all for the best. <laughs> a plague of both your houses! They have made worms meet of me! I have it, and soundly too! Your houses! This gentleman, the prince's near ally, my very friend, hath got his mortal hurt in my behalf. My reputation stained by Tybalt's slander, Tybalt that an hour hath been my kinsman. Oh, sweet Juliet, thy beauty hath made me effeminate, and in my temper softened valour steel. Romeo, brave Mercutio's den. That gallant spirit hath aspired the clouds which too untimely had disc on the earth. This day's black fate on more days doth depend. This but begins the woe others must end. Here comes the furious Tybalt back again. Alive in triumph, and Mercutio slain. Away to heaven, respective lenity, let fire-eyed fury be my conduct now. Tybalt, take back the villain that late thou gavest me, for Mercutio's soul is but a little above our heads. Staying for thine to keep him company, either thou or I or both must go with him. Thou wretched boy that disconsort him here, shout with him hence! Shall determine that. Away be gone, the citizens are up and Tybalt slain. Stand hence, that the prince will doom thee to hence as thou art taken. Hence be gone, away. Why dost thou stay? Where are the vile beginners of this fray? O noble prince, I can discover all the unlucky manage of this fatal brawl. There lies the man slain by Romeo, who slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. Oh, oh, Tybalt. Oh, oh, child. 
Oh, Prince, oh, why are the bloody spells on my dear king? Prince, as thou art true, for blood of ours, shed blood of months. Just Benvolio, who began this bloody fray? The bolt is slain, whom Romeo's hand is slain. Romeo that spoke in fair vein, and bethink how nice the quarrel was, and urgent all your high displeasure. All this uttered with a gentle breath. Calm look, ease, humpy bag, could not take the truce of the unruly spleen of Tybalt, desperate peace, but that he tilts with piercing steel at bolts in Cuscio's breast. Who on this hot turns deadly point to point? And with a martial scorn, with one hand beats cold death aside, and with the other sends it back to Tybalt, whose dexterity is exhausted. Romeo, he cries aloud, hold, friends, friends, part, and swifter than his tongue, his agile arm beats down their fatal points and twixt them rushes, underneath whose arm an envious thrust from Tybalt hits the life out of stout Mercutio. And then Tybalt fled, but by and by comes back to Romeo, who but newly entertained with men, and took the goat like lightning, where out of his heart and stout Tybalt slain. And as he fell, did Romeo turn and fly, this is the truth for us, and the bones of us. He is a kinsman to the monster. A beggar made him false. He speaks not true. Some twenty of the forces of thy strife, and all those twenty killed in one life. I beg for justice, which thou, friends, must give. Romeo killed Tybalt. Romeo must not live. Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio, who now the price of his dear blood doth owe. Oh, not Romeo, Prince, he was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes for the law should end the life of Tybalt. For that offence, immediately we do exile him hence. I have an interest in your hate proceeding, my blood for your rude brawls doth lie a bleeding. But I'll immerse you in so heavy a fine that you shall all repent the loss of mine. I will be deaf to pleading, and excuses, nor tears, nor prayer shall purchase out abuses, therefore use none. Let Romeo hence in haste, else when he's found that hour is his last. Bear hence this body and attend our will, mercy but murders, pardoning those that kill. Face you fiery footed steeds towards Phoebus' lodging. Such a wagon as fate would whip you to the west and bring in cloudy night immediately. Spread thy close curtain, love performing night, that runaway's eyes may wink, and Romeo leap to these arms and talk to an unseen. Lovers can see to do their amorous rites by their own beauty, for if love be blind, at best it grieves with night. Come, civil knight, thou sober suited major and all in black, and learn me how to lose a winning match. Played by a pair of stainless maidenhood, heard the a man blood bathing in my cheeks. With thy black mantle to a strange love grown bold thing that true love acted simple modesty. Come, night, come, when you come out day and night. I will lie upon the wings of night, whiter than you swim on a white raven's back. Come, gentle night, come, loving black browed night, give me my Romeo, and when he shall die, take him and cut him out into little stars. And he shall make the face of heaven so fine that all the world will be in love with night and pay no worship to the garish sun. Oh, I have bought a mansion of a love, yet not possessed it, and no soul not yet enjoyed. Oh, so tedious is this day, as is some night before some honeymoon, to an impatient child that has new robes and may not wear them. Oh, here comes my nurse, and she brings news, and every tongue that speaks but Romeo's name speaks heavenly eloquence. Now, nurse, what news? What news? Why dost thou wring thy hands? Oh, what a day. He is dead. He's dead. We are undone, lady. We are undone. Alack, the day he is gone, he is killed. He is dead. And heaven be so envious. Romeo can. Though heaven cannot. Oh, Romeo. Romeo. Whoever would have thought it, Romeo. What devil art thou that dost torment me thus? This torment should be wrought in dismal hell. I saw the wound. I saw it with mine eyes. God saved the mark here on his manly breast. A piteous cause, a bloody piteous cause. Pale, pale as ashes, all bedaubed in blood. Oh, break my heart, poor bankrupt, break at once. To prison, eyes may look on liberty. Tybalt, 
best friend I had. Oh, courteous, terrible, honest gentleman that ever should I live to see thee dead. What? Stop. This the blow so contrary. This right being slaughtered and Tibbot dead. My dear love cousin and my dear lord. Any dreadful child that's on thy gem will do for who is living if those two are gone. Tibbot is gone and Romeo banished. Romeo that killed Tibbot, he is banished. It did. There's no trust, no faith, no honesty in men, all pejured, all forsworn, all dissemblers. Shame come to him. Blessed be thy tongue for such a wish. He was not born to shame. Upon his brow, shame is a shame to sit. This is a throne where honor may be crowned, sole monarch of this universal earth. Oh, what a beast was I to chide at him. Will you speak well of him that killed your cousin? Shall I speak ill of him that is my husband? Oh, poor my lord. What tongue shall smooth thy name when I, three hours wife, have mangled it? But wherefore for me shall kill my cousin? That villain cousin that killed my husband. Back, foolish tears, back to your native spring. Your tributary drops belong to woe that you mistaking offer up to joy. My husband lived that Tybalt would have slain, and Tybalt's dead that would have slain my husband. What if this is comfort? Where will we by then? Romeo is banished to speak that word. For my mother's Tybalt, Romeo and Juliet were slain or dead. Romeo is banished. There is no end, no limit, measure bound in that word of death, no word in that word of sound. Where are my mother's now? Weeping and wailing over Tybalt's death. Will you go to them? I'll bring you to them. Such things wounds in my home spent, and there's a dry for Romeo's banishment. Mm -hmm. Hie you to your chamber. I'll find Romeo to comfort you. He is hid at Lawrence's cell. I'll find him. Take this ring to my true knight and bid him come take his last farewell. Romeo, come forth, come forth, thou fearful man. Affliction is enamoured of thy parts, and thou art wedded to calamity. Father, what news? What is the prince's doom? What sorrow craves acquaintance in my hand that I yet know not? Too familiar is my dear son for such sour company. I bring thee tidings of the prince's doom. What less than doomsday is the prince's doom? A gentler judgment lies from his lips. Not body's death, but body's banishment. Banishment? Be merciful, say death, for exile hath much more terror in his look. More than death, do not say banishment. Hence from Verona thou art banished. Be patient, for the world is broad and wide. There is no world without Verona walls, but purgatory, torture, hell itself. O oh, deadly sin, O oh, rude unthankfulness, thy fault the law calls death. For the kind prince taking thy part had rushed aside the law and turned that black word death to banishment. This is dear mercy, thou seest it not. Tis torture and not mercy. Heaven is here where Juliet lives, and every unworthy thing may live here and look on her, but Romeo may not. They may seize on the white wonder of dear Juliet's hand and steal immortal blessing from her lips, who even in pure and vestal modesty still blush as thinking their own kisses sin. But Romeo may not. He is banished. Banished. Friar the damned use that word in hell. Banished. Patient, good son. Thou wilt speak again of banishment? I'll give thee armour to keep off thy word. Adversity, sweet milk, philosophy to comfort thee, though thou art banished. Yet banished. Hang up philosophy, unless philosophy can make a Juliet displant a town, reverse a prince's doom. It helps not. It prevails not. Talk no more. And let me dispute thy estate. Thou canst not speak of that that thou dost not feel. Wert thou as young as I, Juliet thy love, an hour but married, Tybalt murderer, doting like me, and like me banished, then mightst thou speak, then mightst thou tear thy hair, and fall upon the ground as I do now, taking the measure of an unmade grave. Arise, Wanox, good Romeo, hide thyself. By and by God's will, what sinfulness is this? I come, I come. Who knocks so hard? Whence come you? What's your will? Let me in the news shall know my errand. 
I come from Lady Juliet. Welcome, madam. Oh, holy friar. Tell me, where is my lady's lord? Where's Romeo? There on the ground with his own tears made drunk. Oh, he's even in my mistress's case. Piteous predicament. Stand up. For Juliet's sake, for her sake, rise and stand. Where should you fall into so deep an earth? Ah, oh, sir. Ah, oh, sir, well, death's the end of all. Spakest thou of Juliet? How is it with her? Does she not think me an old murderer? Now I have spoiled the childhood of our joy with blood removed but little from her own. Where is she and how doth she? What says my concealed lady to our cancelled love? Oh, she says nothing, sir, but weeps and weeps and now falls on her bed and starts up and Tybalt calls and on Romeo cries and down falls again. As if that name shot from the deadly level of a gun did murder her, as that name's cursed hand did murder her kinsman. Hold thy desperate hand! But my disposition better tempered. Hast thou slain Tybalt? Wilt thou slay thyself and stay thy lady too who lives in thee by doing damned hate upon thyself? What rouse thee, man? Thy Juliet is alive for whose dear sake was soon but lately dead. There art thou happy. Tybalt would have killed thee, but thou slewest Tybalt, there art thou happy too. The law that threatens death becomes thy friend and turns it into exile, there art thou happy. A pack of blessings light up upon thy back. Take heed, take heed, for such thy miserable. Go get thee to thy love, as it was decreed. Ascend to her chamber, hence and comfort her. But look thou say not to the watch be set, for then thou canst not pass the night to her, but thou shalt live, till we can find a time to blaze your marriage, reconcile your friends, beg pardon of the prince, and call thee back with twenty, hundred, thousand times more joy than thou went forth in lamentation. Go before nurse, commend me to thy lady, and bid hasten all the house to bed, which heavy sorrow makes them apt unto. Romeo is coming. Lord, I could have stayed here all night to listen to good counsel. Now what learning is? My lord, I'll tell my lady you will come. Do so, bid my sweet prepare to chide. Here, sir, a ring she bid me give to you. Hi, you, make haste, for it grows very late. How well my comfort is revived by this. Go hence, good night, and here stands all your state. Either be gone before the watch be set, or by the break of day disguised from hence to join in Mantua. I'll find out your manner. He shall signify from time to time every good hap that chances you here. Take my hand. Tis late. Farewell. Good night. But a joy past joy calls out to me. It were a grief so brief to part with thee. Farewell. Things have fallen out, sir, so unluckily that we have had no time to move our daughter. Look you, she loved her kinsman Tybalt dearly, and so did I. Well, we were born to die. Tis very late. She will not be down tonight. I promise you, but for your company, I would have been abed an hour ago. These times of woe afford no time to woo. Madam, good night. Commend me to thy daughter. I will. Know her mind early tomorrow. Tonight she has mewed up to her heaviness. Sir Paris, I will make a desperate tender of my child's love. I think she'll be ruled in all respects by me, nay more, I doubt it not. Wife, go you to her you go to bed. Acquaint her here of my son Paris's love and bid her mark you me on Wednesday next. But soft, what day is this? Monday, my lord. Monday? <laughs> well, Wednesday is too soon. Oh, oh, Thursday be it. Oh, Thursday tell her she shall be married to this noble elf. What say you to Thursday? My lord, I would that Thursday were tomorrow. Well then, get you gone. <laughs> oh, Thursday be it. Wife, go to Juliet, help to prepare her up against this wedding day. Farewell, my lord. Good night. not yet near day. It was a nightingale, not the lark, that pierced the fearful hollow of thine ear. Nightly she sings on yon pomegranate tree. Believe me, love, it was a nightingale. It was the lark, the herald of the morn, no nightingale. Look, love, what envious streaks do lace the severing clouds in yonder east. I must stay and die or go and live. It is not daylight, I know it. It is some meteor that the sun exhales. To thee, to thee, this light a torchbearer, and light me on thy way to Mantua. Therefore, stay yet, now leave us not to be gone. Let me be ta'en, let me be put to death. I am content, so thou wilt have it so. I have more care to stay than well to go. 
come death and welcome. Juliet wills it so. Let's talk. It is not day. It is. It is. Hi, hence. Be gone away. Your light and light it grows. Your light and light more dark and dark our roads. Madam. Yes? Your lady mother is coming to your chamber. The day is broke. Be wary. Look about. And when do let day in and let life out? Farewell. Farewell. Art thou gone so? Eh? Hey, husband? Lord? Farewell. Thinkest we shall ever meet again? I doubt it not, and all of these woes will serve for sweet discourses in our family. No divining soul. And see, if I see thee now, thou art below. As one is dead in the bottom of a tomb, even my eyes quick tells me how thou look as pale. Believe me, love, in my eyes so do you. Dry sorrow drinks our blood. Yes. Are you up? Who is it that calls? Is it my lady mother? Is she not down so late and up so early? What an accustomed cause procures her hither? Why, how now, Juliet? Madame, I'm not well. Evermore weeping for your cousin's death? What, when thou washing from his grave with tears? And even if thou couldst, thou couldst not make him live. Therefore have done. Some grief shows much of love, but much of grief shows still some want of wit. Come, let me weep for such a feeling loss. Well, so shall you feel the loss, but not the friend which you weep for. Even so the loss cannot choose, but ever weeps the friend. Well, girl, now weepest not so much for his death, as that the villain lives which slaughtered him. What villain, madam? Well, that same villain, Romeo. Villain? And he be many miles asunder. God pardon him, I do. With all my heart, and no man like him doth grieve my heart. And that is because the traitor murderer lives. I, madam, from the reach of these my hands would number, I might venge my cousin's death. Oh, we will have vengeance. Worry thou not, then weep no more. I'll send to one in Mantua, where that same banished runagate doth live. Shall give him such an unaccustomed dram that he shall soon keep Tybalt company. Then, I hope, thou wilt be satisfied. Indeed, I shall never be satisfied with Romeo till I behold him dead. Is my poor heart for a kingsman vexed? Oh, madam, if you could find a man to bear a poison, I would temper it. That Romeo should, upon receipt, soon sleep in quiet. Oh, how my heart to pause to hear him named, and cannot come to him. To wreak the love I bore my cousin upon that body that slaughtered him. Find now the means, and I'll find such a man. But now, I'll bring thee joyful tidings, girl. Joy comes well in such a needy time. What are they, beseech your ladyship? Well, thou hast a careful mother, child, one who, to put thee from thy heaviness, hath arranged a sudden day of joy, which thou expectest not, and I look not more. What an unhappy time was there with that? Oh, marry the child early next Thursday morn. Oh, the valiant young noble gentleman, the county parish of St. Peter's Church, shall happily make thee there a joyful bride. Oh, my St. Peter's Church and my Peter too. He shall not make me there a joyful bride. I pray you, tell my lord and my mother that I will not marry yet. Here comes your mother. Tell her so yourself. Feel she will take it into your hands. When the sun sets, the air doth drizzle dew. But for the sun set of my brother's son, it rains down right. How now, wife? Have you delivered to her our decree? I have, but she will not. She gives you thanks. I would the fool were married to her grave. But soft, take me with you, take me with you, wife. How? Will she none? Doth she not give us thanks? Is she not proud? Doth she not count her blessed, unworthy as she is, that we have wrought so worthy a gentleman to be her bridegroom? How proud you have, but thankful that you have. Proud can I never be of what I hate, but even thankful for hate, that is meant love. Proud, and I thank you, and I thank you not, mistress and minion you. Thank me no thankings, and proud me no prouds, but set on your fine joints against Thursday next to go into Paris to St. Peter's Church, or I will drag thee out, you green sickness carrying, you tell her, you bag it! Fie, what, are you mad? I pray beseech on my knees, hear me with patience, but to speak a word. Hang thee, young baggage, disobedient wretch. I tell thee what, get thee to church on Thursday, or never after look me in the face. Speak not, reply not, do not answer me, my fingers itch. Wife, we scarce was as blessed that God had lent us but this only child. But now I see that this one is one too much, and that we have a curse in having her out on her hilding. God in heaven bless her. You are to blame, my lord, to rate her so. And why, my lady wisdom, smatter with your gossips, go. I speak no treason. Oh, God, may not one speak. Peace, you mumbling fool, for here we need it not. You are too hot. 
God's bread, it makes me mad. Day, night, hour, tide, time, work, play, alone, in company, still my care hath been to have her matched. And now, having provided a gentleman of noble parentage, a fair demesnus, youthful and nobly trained, stuffed, as they say, with honorable parts, proportioned as one thoughtful fisherman, and then to have a wretched, puling fool, a whining mammoth and her fortune tender to answer, I'll not wed, I cannot love, I am too young, I pray you pardon me. But since you shall not wed, I'll pardon you. Graze where you will, you shall not house with me. Look to it, think on it, I do not you suggest. So the day is near, lay hand on heart, advise, and you being mine, I'll give you to my friend. You being not, hang, beg, starve, die in the streets, for by my soul, I'll never acknowledge thee! Is there no pity in the clouds that seized into the bottom of my grief? Oh, sweet my mother, cast me not away! Delay this marriage a month, a week, for if you do not make that bridal bed in the tomb, Lie. Talk not to me, for I'll speak not a word. Do as thou wilt, for I'm done with thee. Oh God, oh God. shall this be prevented? For what sayest thou? Hast thou not a word of joy so comfort us? Faith, here it is. I think it's best you married with the county. He's a lovely gentleman. Romeo's a dish clout to him, an eagle. Madam, hath not so green, so quick, so fair an eye as Paris hath. It's through my very heart, for I think you're happy in this second match. For it excels your first, or if it did not, your first is dead. Or twere as good he were as living here, and you no use of him. Speakest thou from my heart? And from my soul, too, or else beshrew them both. Amen. What? Oh, thou hast comforted me marvellous much. Go in and tell my lady where I'm gone. Having displeased my mother, out of the fire, to make confession and to be absolved. I will, and this is wisely done. Ancient <laughs> damnation, O oh most wicked fiend! Is it more sin to wish me thus forsworn, or to dispraise my lord with that same tongue she had praised him with above compare so many thousand times? Go, counsellor, now my bosom shall be twain. Go to the friar to know his remedy, or if thou fail, myself have power to die. On Thursday, sir, the time is very short. My father Capulet will have it so. I am nothing slow, just like his haste. You say you do not know the lady's mind, and evil is the course I like it not. And moderately she weeps for Tybalt's death, and therefore little have I talked of love. For Venus smiles not in the house of tears. Now, sir, her father counts it dangerous that she doth give her sorrow so much sway, and in his, and in his wisdom hastes our marriage to stop the inundation of her tears which too much minded by herself alone may be put from her by society. Now, do you know the reason of this sudden haste? I would I knew not why it should be slowed. Here comes the lady towards my cell. Happily met, my lady, and my wife. Let me be so on a neighboring wife. <laughs> what maybe must be love on Thursday next. Must be, shall be. That's a certain text. Come you to make confession to this father? After that, I should confess to you. Do not deny to him that you love me. I'll confess to you that I love him. So will ye, I am sure, that you love me. Just so it would be more prized being spoke behind the back than to your face. Poor soul. My face is much abused with tears. Tears have got small victory by that, and it was bad enough before their spite. Thou wrongst it more than tears with that thought. No slander, sir, which is a truth, and what I speak, I speak it to your face. Thy face is mine, and thou hast slandered it. I do so, for it is not my own. Are you at leisure, Holy Father, now, or shall I come to you at evening mass? My leisure serves me now, pensive daughter. My lord, we must entreat this time alone. God shield, I should disturb devotion. Juliet, on Thursday early I will rouse you. Till then, adieu, and keep this holy kiss. Oh, shut the door. And when thou hast done so, come weep with me past hope, past guilt, past help. Ah, oh, Juliet, I already know thy grief. It strains me past the compass of my own wits. I hear thou must, and nothing may for over to the first to be married to the county. Tell me not, 
sorry that thou hast heard of this, unless thou tell me how I shall prevent it. I came to die, and if what thou speakest speak not of remedy. Hold, daughter. I do spy a kind of hope which craves desperate an execution, as it is desperate that we are willing to prevent. If, rather than to marry Count of Paris, thou hast the strength of will to slay thyself, then it is likely thou wilt undertake a thing like death to drive away the shame. Thy copious with death himself to escape from it, and if thou darest, I'll give thee remedy. Bid me leap rather than marry Paris, run off the battlements of yonder tower. Or bid me go into a new made grave and hide me with a dead man in his shroud. Bid me so fear them told and make me tremble, and I will do it without fear or doubt to live an unseen wife to my true love. Hold then. Go home, be merry, give consent to marry Paris. Wednesday is tomorrow. Tomorrow night, look that thou lie alone. Let not thy nurse lie with thee in thy chamber. Take thou this vial. Being then in bed, this cold distilled liquor, drink thou off. And presently through all thy veins shall run a cold and drowsy humour. And no pulse shall keep its native progress but succeeds. The roses in thy lips and cheeks will fade to pay the ashes. Thy eyes' windows fall like death when he shuts up the day of life. Every part, deprived of supple government, shall stiff and stark and cold appear like death. And in this foreign likeness of death, thou shalt continue two and forty hours and then awake as well as pleasant sleep. Now, when the bridegroom in the morning comes, rouse thee from thy bed, there art thou dead. And as the manner of our country is, and thy best robes uncovered on the bier, thou shalt be born to that same ancient spot where the kindred of the Capulets lie. Give me, give me, tell not me your fear. Go hence, good night. I'll send the friar to Mantua with letters to thy love. Oh, love, give me strength, and strength shall help the board. Farewell, dear father. So many guests and us here were writ. We shall be much unfurnished for this time. What? Is my daughter gone to fire Lawrence? I forsooth. Well, he may chance to do some good on her. Peevish, self willed harlotry it is. See how she comes from Shrift with Mary Lowe. How now, my headstring? Where have you been gabbing? I have learnt me to repent the sins of disobedience and ambition. To you in your behest, I am enjoined by holy laws to fall prostrate now and beg your pardon, pardon, I beseech you. Henceforth, I am ever ruled by you. Send for the county. Go tell them of this. I'll have to slot this up tomorrow morning. Nurse, will you go with me into my closet and help me sort out such needful things you think fit, fit to furnish me tomorrow? Oh no, not till Thursday. There is time enough. Go, nurse. Go with her. We'll to church tomorrow. We shall be short on our provision. It is now near nine. Tush. I will stir about all things will be well. I warrant thee, wife. Go you to Juliet, help to deck her up. I'll not to bed tonight. I shall walk myself to the county Paris and help prepare him against tomorrow. My heart is wondrous light since this same wayward girl is so reclaimed. I pray thee, gentle nurse, leave me to myself tonight, for I have need of my new horizon. Move the heavens to smile upon thy state, which thou knowest is crossed and full of sin. What? Are you busy? Need you my help? To please you, leave me to myself tonight, and let the nurse of night be helpful. I'm sure you have your hands full of so sudden business. Good night. Now get thee to bed, and rest. For thou hast need. Cold fear that flows from my veins that almost freezes up the heat of life. I'll call them back again to comfort me. Nurse? Oh, what should she do? My dismal scene means I must act alone. Come, boy. What if this mixture do not work at all? Shall I be married then tomorrow morning? No, no, I shall forbid it. Lie thou there. Be poison that the friar hath ministered to have me dead. Lest that in this marriage he should be dishonoured because he married me before to Romeo. I fear it is, yet methinks it should not. Had he been tried before a holy man, 
And how sound is she asleep? I must need wake her. Mistress, what mistress? What dressed and in your clothes? <laughs> Alas, my lady is dead. What noise is here? Oh, lamentable day. What is the matter? Look, look, oh, heavy day. Oh, my dear, my dear, oh, my dear. I would die with thee. Help, help, oh, help! For shame, bring Juliet forth. Her lord is come. She's dead. Deceit, she's dead. She's dead, she's dead, she's dead. Ha, let me see her. Out. Alack, she's cold. Her blood is settled and her joints are stiff. Life in these lips is long been separated. Death lies on her like an untimely frost upon the street as far as one can be. Oh, lamentable day. I, death that hath ta'en her place to make me well, that my tongue will not let me speak. Come, is the bride ready to go to church? Ready to go, but never to return. O oh, son, the night before thy wedding day hath death lain with thy wife. There she lies, flower as she was, deflowered by him. Death is my son in law. Death is my heir, my daughter he hath wedded. I will die and leave all to him, life, living, all his debts. I thought long to see this morning's face, and doth it give me such a sight as this? Cursed day, wretched, hateful day! On this measurement hour that ere time saw the lasting labour of his pilgrimage. Or a loving child, a cruel death of catch him from my sight. I've never seen a day as black as this. Cruel death thee quite beguiled. Oh, cruel, cruel thee quite overthrown. Oh, love. Oh, life. Not life, but love in death. Despised, distressed, hated, martyred, killed, uncomfortable time. Why camest thou now to murder? Murder our solemnity. O oh, child, O oh, child, my soul, and not my child, dead art thou. Alack, my child is dead. My child, my joys are buried. Peace, home, for shame. Heaven and yourself have passed this fair maid, and now heaven hath it all. She is advanced above the clouds, higher than heaven itself. So dry up your tears, and stick your fair rosary on this fair course, and in her best array bear her to church. All things that relate to death will be heard from our office to back to you. Our instrument with melancholy bells. Our wedding cheer to a sad burial feast. Our bridal flowers serve for a buried course, and all things change them to the contrary. Sir, go you in, and lady, go with him, and Sir Paris, everyone prepare as the custom is to bear this fair maid unto the way. If I may trust the flattering truth of sleep, my dreams presage some joyful news at hand. My bosom's lord sits lightly in his throne, and on this day an unaccustomed spirit lifts me off the ground with cheerful thoughts. I dreamed that my lady came and found me dead, a strange dream which gives a dead man leave to think. I then dreamed that she came and breathed such life with kisses on my lips that I was revived in an emperor. Ah oh me, how sweet is love itself possessed when but love's shadows are so rich in joy. News from Verona. How now, Balthazar? Dost thou not bring letters from the friar? Um, how is my lady? Is my father well? How is my Juliet? That I ask again, for nothing can be ill if she be well. Then all is well, and nothing can be ill. Her body sleeps in Capo's monument, and her immortal part with the angels lives. I saw her laid low in Kindred's vault, and presently took post to tell it to you. Oh, forgive me for bringing ill usage. You did. 
defeat from Officer. Stephen Simon. I defy you, start. Hence tonight. I do beseech you, sir, have patience. Your looks are pale and wild, and you do import some misadventure. Tush, thou art deceived. Leave me and do the thing I bid thee do, thou hast found no letters from the front. No, my good lord. Get thee gone. Juliet, I will lie with thee tonight. Oh, mischief, thou art swift to enter the thoughts of desperate men. I do remember an apothecary who knew about thee well. What's ho, apothecary? Who calls so loud? I see that thou art poor. Here is forty ducats. Let me have a dram of poison, such soon speeding gear that the wit the wife or he taker may fall dead. Such awful drugs I have, but Mantua's law is death to any he who utters them. The world is not thy friend, nor the world's law. The world affords no law to make thee rich, so be not poor, but break it and take this. My poverty, but not my will. Consents, I pay thy poverty. Grave, for there I must use them. Holy Franciscan Friar, Brother Ho. This one should be the voice of Friar John. How welcome, Brother. What says Romeo? If his mind be broke, give me his letter. Going to find a barefoot brother out, one of our order, to associate you, here in the city, visiting the sick, and finding him, the searches of the town. Suspecting that we both were in a house where the infectious pestilence did reign, sealed up the doors and would not let us forth. So my speed to Mantua there was stayed. Who bare my letter then to Romeo? I could not send it. Um, here it is again. Nor get a messenger to bring it thee. So fearful were they of infection. Unhappy fortune! This letter wasn't my but full of charge of dear import, and the neglecting it made you much danger. Now must I to the monument alone. Within three hours will Fair Juliet wake. Poor living corpse trapped in a dead man's tomb. Give me thy torch, boy. Hence and stand with it. Yet put it out. I will not be seen. Under yonder yew trees lay the oral roll, holding thine ear close to the hollow ground, so shall no foot upon the churchyard tread. Being loose and firm with the digging up of graves, that thou shalt hear it. We saw him to me, now hear something of the ocean. Give me those flowers. Do as I bid thee and go. I am almost afraid to stand alone here in the churchyard, yet I will adventure. Sweet flower, the flowers of thy bridal bed I strew. Oh, oh. I can of dust and stones, with which sweet water nightly I would dew, for wanting that with tears distilled by moan. Those trees that hide for thee the key, nightly shall be strew thy grave and weep. I give warning something doth approach. What cursed foot wanders this way tonight to cross my obscuries in true love's right? What new torch? this letter, and early in the morning see thou deliver it to my lord and father. Give me a light upon my life, I charge thee, whate'er thou hearest or seest, stand all aloof, do not interrupt me in my course. Why I descended to this bed of death is partly to behold my lady's face, but chiefly to retrieve from thence a precious ring from her dead finger, which I must use in view, before hence be gone. I will be gone, sir, not trouble you. So shalt thou show me friendship, live and be prosperous, farewell, good fellow. For all this same. I'll hide me here about, his looks I fear and his attempts I doubt. Confess thee, thou womb of death, engorged with the dearest and of the earth. Force thy watch was to open, spy how scrambled the leaf of it. This is that haughty monster that killed my true love's cabin, with which grief.
It was supposed that the fair creature died. Stop thy unhallowed toil, by a Montague. I do apprehend thee for a felon here. Obey and go with me, for thou must die. Good gentle youth, tempt not a desperate man. Fly hence and leave. Think on these gone, let them affright thee a while, I beseech thee. Youth, put not another sin upon my head by urging me to fury. By heaven, I love thee better than I love myself, for I come here armed against myself. Fly hence, leave, and live. And hereafter say a madman's mercy bade thee run away. I do defy thy conjuration, and I apprehend thee for a felon here. Wilt thou provoke me? Have at thee, boy. <coughs> yet is crimson in thy lips and in thy cheeks. Death's pale flag is not yet advanced. Dear Juliet, why art thou yet so fair? Here, I shall set up my everlasting rest, and shake the yoke of inauspicious stars from this world-weary flesh. Eyes look your last, arms take your last embrace, and lips of breath seal with a righteous kiss. Dateless bargain to engrossing death, come, bitter conduct, come, unsavory guide. Thou desperate pilot, now at once run on the dashing rocks, thy seasick weary bark. Stumbled at graves. Sir, here's one. A friend, and one that knows you well. Bliss be upon you. Tell me, good my friend, which torch is yon that burneth in the Capitol's monument? It doth so, holy sir. And there's my master, one that you love. Is it Romeo? How long hath he been there? Still half an hour. Go with me to the vault. I dare not, sir. My master knows not, but I am gone hence, and fearfully let us knew of death if I stay to listen to his hence. Say then, I'll go alone. As I slept under the sea tree, I dreamt that my master had never fought, that my master slew him. Romeo! What blood is this that stains the stain of the entrance of the sepulchre? What masterless and gory storms stain this place of peace? Lady, from that nest of death, contagion, and unnatural sleep, a greater power than we could have contradicted has thwarted our intents. Come, thy husband in thy bosom there lies dead, and noble Paris too. Come, I'll dispose of thee among a sisterhood of holy nuns. Come, go, good Juliet, I dare no longer stay. <gasps>
be free. This adventure is so early up that calls our person from our morning's rest. What is it that they so shriek abroad? The people in the streets cry Romeo, some Juliet, some Paris, and all run with an outcry toward our monument. What fear is this which startles in our ears? I am the great beast. Unable to do the least yet most suspected as the time and place doth make me against this direful murder. And say at once what thou dost know in this. I will be for my short date of breath is not so long as this tedious tale. Their deadly husband was that Juliet, and she, their dead, was Romeo's faithful wife. I married them, and their stolen marriage day was Tybalt's doomsday, whose untimely death banished us to use making bridegroom for the city. Then came she to me, and with looks so wild, bid me devise a potion so mean that it would <laughs> that would rid her second marriage. But so then gave I her a sleeping potion which took so effect as I intended, as it forced on her. still have known thee for a holy man. Where's Romeo's man? What can he say? Brought my master news of Juliet's death, and in post he came from Mantua, to this same place, to this same monument. This letter he early bid me give his father, and first me a death going to the vault. I departed not and left him there. Give me the letter I will look at. Where is the county's page that raised the watch? What made your master in this place? He came to the navy screen, the clouds, Bid me stand aloof, and so I did. And one comes with light to open the tomb. Then by and by my master drew on him, and then I ran away to the court. This letter doth make good the prior's words, their course of love, the tidings of her death. Where be these enemies? Montague Capulet? See what a scourge is laid upon your hate, that heaven finds means to kill your joys with love. And I, for winking at your discourse, too, have lost a race of kingdom. All are punishing. My brother Montague, give me thy hand. This is my daughter's joint to give me a welcome as well. Oh, I shall give thee more. I shall raise her statue in pure gold, for what Rome's name is known. And no figure rate should be set, that a true and faithful Juliet. As rich shall Romeo by his lady's lie, poor sacrifices of her enmity. A glooming peace this morning with it brings. The sun for sorrow will not show his head. Go hence to have more talk of these sad things. Some shall be pardoned and some punished. For never was there a story of more woe than this of Juliet and her Romeo. Oh. 